imagine that you are with Imam Ali, you are with this superior creation upon man, you are with Amir al Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, commander of the believers, you are with the successor of Rasulullah. And let's say you're having food with him, you're eating with him at his home. And it is just before Fajr, an hour or two before Fajr, on the 19th of Ramadan. So you're having suhoor with him on the 19th of Ramadan before Fajr. And he tells you that he will be struck by Ibn Muljim. How would you react and how would this make you feel? Well, of course, this is devastating news to any lover of Imam Ali السلام, or the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, for that matter. But, of course, at the time, you, I think I feel as if I would react in a way where as if I would want to respect any last rights he may have, for example, heading into, you know, the successorship, for example, of, so Imam al-Hassan is going to be his successor. Is there any rights he wants me to abide by for Imam al-Hassan heading into the future? And also, I would aim to, to gain any bit of last minute wisdom or extraordinary knowledge from the man so that I can take that forward with me for the rest of my life being a, a fallible human I'm, I'm, I'm with Imam Ali having suhoor during the last few hours of his existence on this earth the second greatest human on this in the earth's history I would want to take as much from him as I possibly could even in those last few hours which could change the complexion of my life completely and then I would seek to serve Imam al Hassan with what he said to the best of my ability and also just adding if there's any wishes he has for his for his burial if he wants me to be there or he wants me to have a certain job for example like preparing something preparing a grave or some sort of food for the people who attend then yes this is something of course that I would be honoured to, to practice I want you to imagine that you were in the mosque of Kufa, Masjid al Kufa, and you were praying behind Imam Ali, that Fajr prayer. And you see Ibn Muljim, Ali, get up and strike the Imam. What is the first thing you would do in response? Well, It depends on if the prayer is continuing or if it's suddenly come to a halt as, as due to the strike. I mean, uh, I know this is going to happen. I know this is going to happen. I've been informed by the Imam himself that this will happen. I think, so it's not necessarily trying to stop anything because I can't stop what's going to happen. It's more the emotional reaction. And of course, being in the state of prayer, it's an act, of, a practice that demands concentration. But when you see your Imam being struck by Ibn Muljim, by Abdul Rahman Ibn Muljim, it's obviously going to strike a devastating emotion. It's, it's difficult to to keep concentrated and continue with the, the great act of prayer if, if, that, if it was to continue when you see your Imam get struck right in front of you and I'm directly behind him
Now, I want you to picture that you are beside Imam Ali. You're beside Imam Ali السلام, in the final moments on his deathbed. Imam Hassan's there, Imam Hussein. Now, you're there with him alone now. They, they've left you alone for you to have you know, a minute or two with Imam Ali. What would you say to him? What would you ask him if you could say anything to him? I would say to him, how would he recommend, best recommend that me and the Muslims at the time, the lovers of Imam Ali السلام, keep the lights, the lights of himself and the Prophet Muhammad and all the other prophets before shining with the rest of Ahlul Bayt still to come and even afterwards how could we best implement a structure or morals how do we continue to perfect the morals of man during Ahlul Bayt through the Imams and after as well so that we can still implement justice because justice in the sense of a fallible human not so much we can never implement a justice of Imam Ali or, or Ahlul Bayt of infallible but how can we implement a justice that can you know best serve humanity in the Imam's absence course with the Imam you know he used to say he was very clear use me before you lose me no other Imam said this firstly I would hope that I, I certainly had used him while I could and not neglected him so I just hope in my mind that I would have served him to the best of my ability with the purest of intentions and respected him and his rights throughout his life and as far as Ibn Muljim I wouldn't ask him about Ibn Muljim because he would have made it clear to me and others he struck me once therefore you strike him once and give him water as well he looks thirsty that is another thing I would look to implement in the future as well. Even if there was an injustice to one of the Muslims or one of the Ahlul Bayt, you know, still give him water. Or even today, still give the man water or woman water and only punish them in a way of justice. One strike, one strike, not two strikes. Or, so one strike for Imam Ali and another strike for me and my ego. No, no. You implement the morals always and implement the lessons that he that Imam taught us even in his last moments the most fabulous of morals that can never be replicated today today my ego says hit and I will hit shaitan in my ears would say hit so it's about it's about pondering and it's about reflecting on these subtle messages from the Imam to always implement justice even in the most subtle way that's what Imam Ali stood for whether it was just after the Prophet died during the Prophet's life even or after the Prophet died and even he tried to implement justice in his death on his deathbed and during his death because Hussein and Karbala implemented the same thing 
take in take water not just for you her and your people but for your horses as well i can't bear to see a horse thirsty this was something imam ali did in the battle of safin with muawiya as well hussein learned this likewise i will learn this learn this as well take some for not just you and your people but for your horses as well i can't bear to see a horse thirsty it's no surprise that hussein implements this when he's seen his father implement this in safin so therefore those 2 minutes i will just seek the best possible advice on how to continue to implement morals and actions that are going to best serve ahlul bayt and humanity afterwards the morals that i can i can not only tell my children about but the people the muslims who may not have had the opportunity to speak to imam ali during the time of his death as he was dying so i'll use that privilege to continue to spread the message of imam ali alayhi salam Very powerful brother, very powerful statements. Finally, I ask you, imagine now you are face to face with the Imam of your time. May Allah hastens reappearance, Imam is the one. You're having a conversation and he asks you how you show your love for Imam Ali through your actions. What would you say to him? I'd like to think uh, I show my love for Imam Ali salam, through my morals and also through attending the majalis for not only him, not only in his honour but in honour of his family, his line. And also for making supplications to God to continue to pr protect the Imam Ali and continue to shower him with sustenance. Because you see, those that say you are your Imams, they're dead. Maybe no, they're not dead. No one who dies in the way of, of their Lord is dead. They're just receiving sustenance from your Lord. They're alive receiving sustenance from your Lord. So I'd like to think, I know Ali's, Imam Ali is getting protected anyway, but I'd like to think my supplication, maybe my supplication is resulting in even more sustenance being showered upon him. Imam Ali was the man who chronologically implemented the Qur'an, put the Qur'an together. I'd like to think that I haven't abandoned the Qur'an. And when I say I haven't abandoned, I like to think that every day I'm seeking to learn that just that bit more. Just that bit more. So that on the day of judgment, I can stand with my feet firm. And if Imam Ali is in front of me, السلام, I can say, yes, I did not abandon the Qur'an that was left by Prophet Muhammad wasallam. A prophet that praises Imam Ali numerous times. A, a Quran that states that he sold his soul for God and for the religion of Islam and for Muhammad. I'd like to think that I sold my soul for him. By not only learning the Quran, not only by inshallah becoming a Quran memorizer, but by pondering on each and every verse. Why was this revealed? Where was it revealed? Meccan, Medinian? Who is this in honor of? Who is this discrediting? And I think this is something that Imam Ali السلام, would love to see in any lover of Ahlul Bayt. Because they say, you know, Imam Ali can't do shafa'a for you. 
What, what, what's the condition for someone that can do intercession on the Day of Judgment? Alim, Imam Ali is Alim. Quran memorizer. I mean, what meaning doesn't has it memorized Quran? What someone who's a martyr? What when Ibn Muljim struck him, Imam Ali didn't die as a martyr. So I, I really do think that if I if I sat down with the twelfth. Imam Sahib al Asri was Zaman. I could, I could sit down in front of him, and say to him that I desperately seek not only your intercession but the intercession of Imam Ali alayhi salam, and I hope that my actions in this life justify me getting intercession from from the two of you, and from all the other Imams and all the other prophets. I just hope that the Mahdi feels that I have served Imam Ali to a respectable extent and maybe even surpassed the extent required for a lover of Imam Ali <laughs> Oh, God.